like me Oh, his father only one I see V is very, very extraordinary E is even more than anyone that you adore and love Is all that I can give to you Love is more than just a game for two Two in love can make it Take my heart now, please don't break it Love was made for me and you Hi guys, this is Andrew with RockClass101.com and in this week's ukulele lesson, Christopher is going to be teaching you how to play L-O-V-E, Love. So this is a timeless love tune and we're putting it out just in time for Valentine's Day this year. So it's the perfect song to play for that special someone in your life. Now what is exciting about this arrangement, as you heard in the performance or saw in the performance, is that it's a hybrid. So the first half is a instrumental chord melody and then the second half is meant for vocal accompaniment. So you get the best of both worlds and there should be something in this arrangement for everyone, rather you want to play instrumental or you want to sing and play or you want to do both. So it should be a lot of fun in that regard. Now I did get a chance to play through everything, the entire arrangement, and first off I gotta say it's a ton of fun, but secondly I think it's going to be perfectly suited for the intermediate player. So it's got a few tricky chord transitions in a couple spots, but Chris will take you step by step through the entire arrangement and break down the best way to play everything. But for the most part, I think it's pretty great suited for the intermediate player. And if you're curious on how I define the intermediate and the beginner and the advanced player and what each level should be working on before advancing to the next, you can click this link to find out. Now let's talk a little bit about the lesson itself. So we're gonna break this song into two video lessons. So in this video, which is the part one lesson, Chris will be teaching you how to play the chord melody. And then in the part two video, he'll teach you how to play the accompaniment vocal part. So if you wanna check out the part two lesson, you can click this link right here. That link will also have the tabs that you can print off and follow along with for the lesson. And the on, oop. <laughs> I forgot the name for a second, the interactive on-screen tab viewer. So this is a really cool feature where you can hit play, you can watch the tab scroll across in real time, you can highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down to any speed you wish, just a great asset for learning this song that much easier. All right guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and hand it off to Chris to teach you how to play this, and then I'll see you at the end of the video. Hey friends, this is Christopher Davis Shannon with Rock Class 101, and today I'm going to show you how to play the 1965 song by Burt Kampfert and Milt Gabler, written for the great Nat King Cole, L-O-V-E. Nat recorded this the same year on an album of the same title, and it was an instant classic that has been recorded hundreds of times since. This is a very simple song if you're getting just into the jazz style of playing you. You can play much of this with just open position chords and the melody happens to sit very well within those chords. I've arranged this in both chord melody and accompaniment style if you wish to sing along with it. But the entire arrangement uses only the thumb of the right hand. So we have very simple rhythms and we're just going to pick out individual notes while accompanying ourselves with chords at the same time. Let's get started. I've arranged the beginning of this tune much the same as how the Nat King Cole version starts, with a vamp, or a series of repeated chords that just set up the tune before we introduce the melody. We're going to start on a C major chord that will be open, four, three, and then we're not going to play the A string, but since we're playing with our thumb, we can just stop when we get to the E string. We don't have to strum all the way through. You want to use your ring finger to play the E on the fourth fret of the C string, and your middle finger to play the G on the third fret of the E string. Our second chord is a G9 with a sharp fifth, which sounds like a whole lot of nonsense, but it's not really so bad. We're just gonna slide our ring finger on down to the D sharp on the third fret of our C string. Our first finger will play the F on the first fret of our E string. 
and everything will be open. And after this, we're going to play a G seventh chord, open two, one, two, the one you've always played, and then right back to that G nine with a sharp five. So you can see what's really happening here is we have this little descending chromatic walk down on the C string with chords over top. Now each of these are going to be two beats a piece, but we're only going to strum them once. They will be half notes. So it'll be four total strums for this vamp, and it's gonna sound a little bit something like this. Two, three, four. And then we repeat it. And though it's only written twice on the music, you can feel free to just play this as much as you want just to, to set up the feel and the tempo of the song before you break into the melody. So let's try that together, just this little intro part. One, two, three, four. The main part of the tune starts on one of our favorite chords. Start open position C major, open, open, open three, probably the first chord you ever used. We're gonna strum this once and we're gonna keep with this half note feel throughout the song. The vast majority of the strums will be just one every other beat and we're going to sprinkle melody notes in between that, but the chords are going to keep pulsing on beats one and three throughout the entire tune. So we're gonna strum this C. And then we're gonna strum it again on beat three. Same rhythmic pattern that we had in the intro. But directly after we strum this on beat four, we're going to lift up our ring finger. We're gonna have our middle finger on the second fret of the A string, creating a C major seventh really, but we're just going to pluck on beat four this B on the second fret. So here's our first measure of the A section of the tune. We just have that individual note on the end. And then we're going to leave that right there and just now strum through on beat one. Our chords will always be on beats one and beat three on just a C major seventh chord, just leaving this second finger here. But on beat two, we're going to have to add another melody note and that will be our open A. So all we have to do is lift up our second finger, play that open A. So here's our first six beats of the entire song. Now when we have this open string, this is probably the hardest voicing that we need to use in the entire song is right here on beat three of the fourth measure. Is we're going to play a C augmented chord. So this is going to be five, four, four. And we're not going to utilize the A string at all. This G sharp on the fourth fret is our melody note. So we're going to jump after we play our open A to the C augmented and then on beat four, play our open A string as that's our melody. So let's listen to these first two measures of the A section of the tune. All right, and now let's look at the next measure. We're going to go to a D minor seventh, and that's gonna be two, two, one, three. With our middle finger, ring finger, first finger, and pinky, you've likely played this one. And this is going to be rhythmically the same as the first measure of the two. And we're going to play a half note. So one strum, two, and then strum again. And then we're gonna have a quick melody note just walking down. We're gonna slide our pinky on beat four down to the B on the second fret of our A string. So here is measure five for you. So we can slide that on down. And then we're going over to a G seventh, just our regular root position one. If you already have your pinky on the second fret, you can feel free to just leave it right there and not use your ring fingers you generally would, but you can also swing it over and use the standard finger if you feel that that's too cramped because we're going to be on this G7 for a moment. So in bar six, we're just gonna strum that G7 two times, two half notes. And then we're gonna play it again, but we're going to now add in one of those melody notes on beat four. So we're gonna strum it twice, and then we're gonna lift up whatever finger is holding down the B on the second fret of our A string. So that we have an open A string, now we're gonna pluck that on beat four. And then we're gonna strum through, and this will be our G9. This is very close to that chord we played at the beginning of the tune, but without the sharp fifth in there. We just have this A in there. And then our next melody note on beat two of measure eight, we strum through this G9 and then our open G string. If you're on low G, of course, you can just play this note on the third fret of your E string. 
And then our next melody note is an F sharp on beat three. So we're just going to take our ring finger and put it down on the F sharp, the second fret on our E string, and not strum through the A string again. And then back to the G or back to the third fret, depending whether you're playing high or low G uke. So I'm gonna start on bar six now so that you can hear what this little G seventh passage sounds like. So it's gonna be. And then we're gonna resolve that to our C major seven. And that's going to give us our first little bit of the tune. We're going to resolve this down to a C sixth chord. So we'll have C major seventh, strum twice, and then on beat four, open A, and then we'll just strum our C sixth twice. So let's listen to the first eight measures of the tune and then try that much together. It's going to sound a little bit something like this. Two, three, four. Let's try that much together. One, two, one, two, three, four. Now after this C sixth chord, we're going to stay on a C, but we're going to make this a C seventh chord now. This is a voice that we've used in some of my previous arrangements for rock class. We're going to have open, open, six, that's our B flat, our seventh on the E string, and then seven under the ring finger on our A string. So you can hear that's just a different voicing for a C seventh chord, but our melody note is on the E up here. So we're going to strum this C seventh twice. And then we're going to come down with our first finger on the fifth fret of our A string on beat four. It's that same rhythm that we've been having all the time. We strum on beat one, beat three, and beat four to keep that melody moving. And then we're going to strum that on beat one again. Just this now, a C9 chord really as we're adding the D. And then we're going to slide on down. Beat two is going to give us a melody note in measure 12 on the third fret, the C. So here is the little bit for the C9. Then we go down to a C major seventh and resolve right back up to the C on the third fret. So let's listen to this little C section, C seventh section for two measures. And you can see we're continuing that strum through on beats one and beat three every single time. It's giving this consistent accompaniment behind all the individual notes. Now next we're going to an F major seventh. You're gonna bar across the fifth fret and put your ring finger or pinky, whichever's more convenient for you, on the seventh fret, that E on your A string. And this is gonna be that same rhythmic device. Strum on one and three and then an individual note on four. So our individual note is going to already be down. We're just going to lift up our ring finger or pinky from the A string so that we just have this bar straight across and we'll be playing the fifth fret as our melody note and then strumming again on beat one of measure 14. Now our next melody note on beat two is a C, which is contained in this chord that we're already playing if you're playing high G uke. It will be on the fifth fret of your G string. If you're on low G, you can of course play that on the eighth fret of your E string as an individual note instead. And then we're gonna bring that down and we're gonna do a partial strum on beat three only with the G, C, and E strings. And we're gonna put our ring finger on the B natural that is on our seventh fret of our E string. So we're gonna strum through like that. So let's listen to that F sixth bar with this moving melody in there. And we go right back to that C, regardless of whether you're playing it on the G string or on the eighth fret of the C string. And then we have the same melodic pattern repeated, but it's now over top of a D seventh chord or a D nine chord as we have an E in the melody. We have the same melody. All we need to do for these next two measures, everything is the same except when we start off on this F major seventh, we're just going to add our middle finger on the F sharp on the sixth fret of our C string, and that's gonna magically make this F sixth a D ninth chord. 
So now let's listen to these four measures together, our F major seventh through the D minor, and listen, especially that the melody lines are identical. We're just changing the harmony by one note underneath. Same melody, repeated twice. And now measure 17, we're going to a G 13th chord. Open, five, seven, seven. We're just, again, leaving that E in the melody on the A string on the seventh fret. That's a reoccurring theme here. And we're going to do a bit of the same melody. On beat two, we're going to use the bar on the fifth fret to play the D on the A string. And then we're just gonna strum through as the chord is, open five, seven, five, giving us a G seventh chord. And then we need to come down and grab the third fret of our A string on beat four. So it's gonna sound a little bit something like this. And then we're gonna take this and we're gonna make it a G sus four, which is just a G seventh chord, but we're playing a C, which is that note that we're already playing on the A string. And then on beat two, we're gonna walk down to a regular G7th, but just pluck the A string. As always, we're keeping the harmony on just beats one and three. And then we're gonna go and use that G9 sharp five that we used in the beginning. Open three, one, open, because we have this A in the melody. And then just add the B on the last beat. And we'll have this entire little section. So let's listen to this from the F major seventh and then play these last six bars of the A section together. So it'll sound a little bit something like this. One, two, three, four. That brings us right back to our C. Let's try those six measures together. One. Two, one, two, three, four. Now we're going to repeat back to the beginning of the chord melody section and we'll see that when we get to the second half of the tune, the first 12 measures that we've already gone over are absolutely identical to this. So we don't have to worry about that little bit. We can just jump right to the second ending and see how we finish out this song. Much of the chords are similar. We just have a, some slight changes here in the chords. So we're gonna start again on that F major seventh, much as we did in the first ending, but we're going to have a slightly different melody over top of this. We're going to play every four beats. Again, we're going to alternate chord and then melody note. So we're gonna move a little bit faster through the chord. So it's gonna be F major seventh, lift up the ring finger, pluck the A string, and then we're gonna strum through that and then play the C that's on the fifth fret of our G string or the eighth fret of the E string if you're playing on low G uke. So here's what the first measure of the second ending sounds like. All right, and then we're gonna slide on down to an F sharp diminished seventh. And what we're going to do for this is there are a few ways you can actually finger this chord that will work. You can use individual fingers, two, three, two, three. You can use a partial bar. You can bar across the second fret. And I use my ring finger and pinky and leave the middle finger not used. And the reason for this is we're gonna need it in a second to grab a melody note. And we get this nice motion between the two voicings of our F sharp diminished seventh chord if we don't use the middle finger. It's one less movement for us. But feel free to experiment and see what fingering works well for you for this one. So we're gonna have the same rhythm in this. We're going to play every single beat. So we'll play our F sharp diminished seventh and then just lift up whatever note is, whatever finger is playing on the A string. And we'll have our bar already down. So we'll have the second fret for our next note. And then we have an open A, but as we're strumming on beats one and three, we need to voice the full chord here. So we're going to have two, three, two, looks like a G major chord just hopped over one string and an open string here, and then right back to the second fret on beat four. So here's what measure 20 sounds like. This is a tough little one. And then we're going right back to C and we're gonna just hold that out. And this is a measure we've seen before. 
On beat four, we're going to come down and play the B individually on the A string, the second fret, and then go to a G seventh chord. So when you're playing this, you can just slide the ring finger down to get that. And that'll really set you up for the G seventh to play it. And when we get to this G seventh part, we're going to G seventh, open A, back to G seventh on beat three, and then grab the D on the fifth fret of your A string with your pinky on beat four of measure 22. And if you can't reach that, remember that you can move this, this ring finger. It doesn't have to stay down and that'll give you a little bit more flexibility in the fingers. And then we're gonna resolve right down to our C major chord. So let me start this last little section from the F major seventh so you can hear how it all sounds and then we'll put it together. Here's our F major seventh, two, three, four, And at the end, we're going to give ourselves a little turnaround if we're going to go back to the beginning. You can, of course, just end on that C. But if you want to continue on and keep singing a verse of this, we need to give ourselves a harmonic setup to get back. So we'll do a C, and then we'll go to C sharp, diminished seventh, open one, open one, and then D minor seventh that we've already played, and our G seventh. So let's try the second ending together. One, two, one, two, three, four. Now that you're ready to play the whole chord melody arrangement of this song, let's look at how we could strum this if we wanted to sing along. All right, guys, so this week's lesson is a ton of fun. It's a timeless love song, and it's really, really cool that it's a hybrid. It's half instrumental, half of it is that beautiful chord melody, and then the second half is meant for vocal accompaniment. So you, you get to work on the best of both worlds and those two different styles of playing. So guys, I do want to remind you that if you want to watch the part two lesson, which will cover the second half of this tune, that vocal accompaniment, you can do so by clicking this link right here, or you can go to the site rockclass101.com and do a search for L-O-V-E. Now also on that page will be the tabs that you can print off, keep for your records, plus the interactive on-screen tab here. So that really cool uh, tab player that you can watch the music scroll across in real time. You can highlight bars, loop sections, slow it down, all that fun jazz. So guys, again, I hope you enjoyed this lesson and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.